Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with the PC Michiana Tech Help Show. I hope everything's going well with you. Today I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, but kind of debated what the best approach was. Um, make sure you subscribe to my videos. I know that's kind of off topic, but uh, it does help my website grow and it helps me keep making videos. And you can do that at my YouTube channel or if you're watching this video, it's right above the video. If you're watching it on YouTube, of course. Now, <clears throat> virtualization is a technology that's been around for a while, and it allows you to run legacy operating systems, such as Windows XP or Windows 98, on Windows 7 or Vista, you know, newer operating systems. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. For Vista, there's only one way to do it, but for 7, there is a Windows XP mode, which allows you to actually run Windows XP in Windows 7 easily. Let me show you how to get to that first. Now, at my website, pcmichiana.com, I have a section called free downloads. So go ahead and once you've typed in, you know, my website into the URL and gone there, go ahead and select free downloads. And when the free downloads page comes up, now this is where I keep all the free download tools I've collected over the years as an IT geek. But if you scroll down to the section titled virtual machines, there is a new one I just added called Virtual PC Windows XP Mode for Windows 7. Now this version, as you will soon see, only works for Windows 7 Professional and higher. So we're going to go ahead and select this first. And then go ahead and click the picture or the, the link here so that you can start the open the page to download it. And then we're looking at the actual Microsoft website where you can download the virtual XP virtual PC Windows XP mode. Now, as you can see, if I select a system here, I will select which version of the operating system I have. If you select anything like Starter or Home Premium or Home Premium 64-bit, you'll notice it does not have this software available for it, unfortunately. But don't worry, I'm going to show you guys how to do it without the XP mode. This is just the easiest way to do it if you have Windows XP Professional or greater. Now, if you do have Windows XP Professional or greater, actually, before I do that, let me, let me show you how to check. Go ahead and go to your desktop here and uh, select your start button. And if you go up to computer, you can actually right click and then you can select properties. And this will bring up all the information on your system. If you look under the system setting, the system tab here, it'll actually show you information on your operating system. Uh, system type, you can see it's a 64-bit operating system, so that gives you your bit rating. And if you go up here to Windows Edition, you can actually see what version you're currently running. It'll say Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7, uh, I think it was, uh, what was it, uh, something. <laughs> and then Windows 7 Ultimate is the, the final version. Now, if you have any of those versions, you can go ahead and just download this and then select your language. In my case, it's English. Scroll down, and then what you'll do is you'll download Windows XP mode, and then it'll make you download Virtual PC, and then you're going to run an updater here, and it'll actually run you, after you've run all three of these and gone through all the steps, you're going to be able to go down to your start menu here, and you will, you might not have this nice little shortcut here, but you can just type in Windows Virtual PC, and it'll show up here on your programs list, and you can select that, and they will have given you a nice little Windows XP mode tab here so that you can actually boot up your Windows XP mode. You can just double click on it to start it. Now, before you start it, we can go ahead and optimize it real quick. You can just click settings. And I recommend you go to memory and then you can edit, actually, you can edit the memory that's being allocated to this virtual machine, but it must be shut down before you, d you do so. So if you check down here, it'll show you instructions on how to shut it down. I recommend having a gig of memory if you have the free memory on your main operating system. Go ahead and stick a gig of memory in there, and that should help out the performance of it. Now, for those of you who do not have Windows 7 uh, professional or greater, there's another way to do it. Actually, I think this method is much better, but it does require that you have a Windows XP installation disk. So I don't know if you have one lying around with a license or if you have a buddy who has one or some shady neighbor who has a copy. Again, I don't condone pirating at all on any level, so I can't encourage you to do such things. But go ahead and go back to my website. Remember, that's pcmichiana.com and to the free download section. And we're going to go back to the virtual machines, machines, the virtual machines section. And we're going to actually download Sun's Virtual Box. So go ahead and select Sun's Virtual Box. And then go ahead and click the download link here. And then go ahead and click the download to bring up the actual Virtual Box homepage. 
Now, once the VirtualBox homepage has come up, just on the left-hand side, go ahead and select Downloads. And then, of course, you want to select whichever version applies to you. And in our case, we are going to run VirtualBox 4.16 for Windows hosts. So go ahead and select that link. And then you can download the VirtualBox and run the installer. And then go through the standard installation. And after you've installed it, I'm going to walk, not walk you through that because I only have so much time to make these videos. Select this Start button down here. And what you'll have is, is you'll have a Oracle VM VirtualBox. If it doesn't show up on your quick list here, remember you can just type it into a search bar. So let me go ahead and select that. Now once it's brought up your VirtualBox, you actually have to create a new Windows XP version. This will actually run all operating systems, not just Windows XP. You can actually install Linux, you can install uh, XP, you can install Windows 98, you can install DOS, uh, you can install all kinds of Linux distributions, so different like uh, Red Hat. Uh, but to do that, just select New, and you're going to have the new Virtual Machine Wizard, which will actually walk you through setting up your virtual machine. So go ahead and click Next, and the name of the name and OS type. I'm going to go ahead and type in My Test Windows XP, and for the operating system, I'm going to select Windows because that's the one I want. As you can see, you can even install Mac on here. Uh, so I'm going to select Microsoft Windows. And then I'm going to go ahead and select mine as Windows XP. But as you can see, you can actually go all the way back to Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. So then select Next. And this will let you allocate a certain amount of memory to your operating system. And of course, I recommend at least 512 or 1024. I'll go ahead and do 1024. And then select Next. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just create a standard startup disk and we're going to create a new disk. Now, if you already created a virtual machine in the past and you're replacing it with something new, you can use an existing and just find the file. Then just select Next again. And we're going to go ahead and use the VirtualBox disk image because that's, uh, it's optimized for this virtual machine so it'll run better. So go ahead and select Next. And we're going to dynamically allocate it. This, what this means is it's not going to chew up your primary computer's hard drive space. It's going to wait until that space is needed and add it to the virtual machine's machine as it's requested. Once upon a time, you could only do fixed size. Thankfully, you don't have to do that anymore. So go ahead and select Next. And I'm going to leave the location. And then for the size of the virtual disk, I'm just going to leave it the default that it sets. It's 10 gigabytes. Now remember, it's it's going to fluctuate depending on what you use. And then, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. This size will, re will be the reported to the guest OS as the maximum size of this virtual disk. Actually, you may want to you may want to put more space in there if you don't if you want if you're going to install a lot of applications on it. And then just select next. And then it's going to give you all the settings and yeah, yeah, yeah. And just click create. And then you get another nice little configuration here and then select Create again. And then as you can see, I said My Test Windows XP. Now, before you start it, select Settings and we're going to optimize it before we even boot it up for the first time. On the left-hand side, select Display. Now, this is a great feature of the virtual machine for, uh, for Sun's VirtualBox. It's actually separate from all the other ones. Use up half of your video memory, because this will give you more video memory in your XP machine, make it run way faster. We're going to enable 3D acceleration and 2D video acceleration as well. So then when you're done with those two, you're pretty much optimized. Just select OK. And then one more thing you got to do is select Start. And this will actually boot up your operating system. Now they give you this first run wizard. It's going to give you some instructions here. It's going to have you perform the first steps. Now it's going to say use the next button to go to the next page and back to return, blah, 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 that's easy stuff. Now this is gonna ask you where your Windows XP disk is at. Mine is currently in my CD-ROM drive, so it's gonna be host drive D, and then I'm just gonna select next. And then it's gonna say, be careful, you know, not be careful, but make sure it's the disk is in the drive, and then when you're done installing it, you have to remove the on-mounted device, and blah, blah, blah. So now it's booting up my Windows XP installation. And it's gonna read the CD from my CD-ROM drive, and then it's, as you can see, going to run me through the Windows setup. Once you're done, you can uh, boot up Windows XP and run it like a normal operating system. Now that's all there is to this video. I know it went a little long, but uh, it's a lot of information and it's a great, great way to run older software on newer operating systems. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. If you're awesome, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to follow on Facebook and on Twitter. I will talk to you guys later.